Do you want to make an indoor lighting design that works? Let me share the greatest method and advice with you. This tutorial is for someone who wishes to create lighting for their homes or offices, and architects and interior designers will find it useful in their regular design operation. Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Take me Choosing a stylish pendant or a table lamp that fits with the rest of your area may appear straightforward. Architectural, practical lighting fixtures, on the other hand, can be far more difficult to select on your own. Professional designers consider lighting to be the secret sauce for making personal living spaces more functional, comfortable, and surely more beautiful. If you want to make a functional lighting plan, you have to go through several steps. Please, if you are new here or you have been watching our videos, kindly subscribe to this channel and like this video. Step number one is to prepare a plan. Simplify the drawing to include only the necessary elements or information that captures the building outline or the space outline. Make it to scale and include details such as window and door arrangement, as well as furniture layout. This way you'll have a better idea of the space you are dealing with and can more readily decide where and how many lights to use. For example, you may like to install two to four down lights above your sofa depending on its size, so you may eliminate the area where you'll be seated while using less elsewhere. Similarly, you can use two wall washers on walls where you want to hang at works. For me, I use Arcade software. I will create layers and layer combinations to control and manage the visibility of elements in the drawing, so it makes my job easier. Step 2 is to outline what takes place in each part of the room. Outlining what occurs in each area of the room can assist you in determining the sort of lighting you require based on functionality. If you read and watch TV on your sofa, for an example, you may require different types of lighting to achieve both goals. Before choosing any sort of lighting, consider the following. What will you be using the room for? Lighting is primarily functional and you must first determine how you will utilize a room before determining how much and what type of lighting you require. You might draw a little X or any other shape over the places where task lighting is required. Mark with graphics all of the room's possible purposes such as TV reading, dining, studying, exercising and so on. Adding arrows to depict the direction people will be facing in the room can aid in the determining where light fixtures should be placed. For example, whether working at a desk or watching a television. Step number three is to indicate where the light should come from. You must define where the illumination should come from on your floor plan as you've now sketched an outline of your space. Begin with the basic lighting requirements for the entire room. Then distinguish between functional and mood lighting for individual areas. General lighting, ambient lighting, and task lighting are the three primary forms of lighting, and a good lighting scheme incorporates all these three. Lighting close to activities such as suspended pendant over a food prep area or a dimmable LED task lamp on a desk should be supplemented with general lighting from overhead chandeliers, pendants, or other ceiling lights. Dimmers can be used to create a mood for entertaining, meditation, or anything in between. After you've established functional or general lighting, you can move on to the fun part, adding ambience or accent lighting. Pendants lights, decorative wall lights, LED track lighting, up lights, wall washers, and table and floor lamps are just a few examples. Take into account all illumination surfaces such as walls and ceilings. You are still designing where you want light at this point.
Step number four, identify where sockets and switches are located in the chosen space. Include the location of each switch and socket in the floor plan for the chosen room so you can see where you can utilize certain lighting. Take note of existing electrical outlets in your area. Too few sockets are typical in older homes, which encourages harmful plug overloading. Consider where you'd like to put light switches. Move around the room and consider the entry and exit points logically. Consider those late night bathroom visits and midnight visits. You don't want to be looking for the switch that isn't there in the dark. Don't forget to think about including dimmer switches. The ability to change the mood and environment is simple and useful and it transforms. Step number five is to select specific light fixtures for each part of the room. Choose which sorts of lamps you want to install or hang in different places of the room. This provides you an indication of a style and design, but more significantly function and ambience. If you want the files used in this video and checklist for lighting design, check the link in the description or up in the right corner to download. Make sure you support the work, guys. If you also want to create a better project documentation in Archicad, we have a transformational course that will take you from level zero to be advanced in carrying out delivering project in no time. Check the link in the description for this course and the link for Archicad Beam resources we offer on our website. Watch this video if you want to improve your architectural um, drawings in Archicad. In general, lighting is more than just determining how many down lights to install in each area. Lighting, while frequently overlooked, has a significant impact on the design and feel of a home. Hopefully, these helpful hints will come in handy in your next project or when building or renovating your home. Thank you and keep on supporting this channel. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. Thank you.